In 2006, Google buys YouTube for $1.65 billion. NASA sends the New Horizons space probe to Pluto because why not? And Nintendo releases the Wii console. And from that moment on, Mario Kart got really, really fun. Also, BBE released a line of pedals that I think are underappreciated. And today, I'm going to make you appreciate them. BBE stands for Barkus Berry Electronics, and they've been around for a long, long time. They're primarily well-known and famous in the pro audio world for a famous rack unit called the Sonic Maximizer. In the late 1980s, they did dabble with some guitar products like the BBE Stinger pedal, but in 2006, they released this entire full line of guitar effects ranging from compression all the way to fuzz, and they're quite dear to my heart. And after this episode, I think they'll be dear to you as well. With that said, I'm going to take you through each one. First up is my absolute favorite. I'll probably say that about each of these because they're that good, but really the orange squash. It's based around the old Dan Armstrong orange squeezer. And some of you who are familiar with my JHS pedal line are probably going, hmm, you did a pedal around this as well. And I think this had a lot to play in that because this was one of the first compressors that ever stayed on my board for a significant amount of time. And when I got into modifying and building old classic circuits and exploring, it made me hunt this up and kind of take my own attempt at tweaking the circuit. So I give it some credit for that. It sounds amazing. There's also a little bit of a conspiracy here. You ready? It is the main squeeze. Now let's take a look at these. One says orange squash, one says main squeeze. Now I do want to note that this is in the original box in the plastic. I don't want to take it out of the plastic because I don't want to touch it because it's pretty rare because Digitech kind of dropped a letter on them because they had a pedal called the main squeeze. That's as big as this conspiracy gets, but to me, any conspiracy is worth talking about. Let's listen to it. Next up is a fantastic overdrive called the BBE Green Screamer. I bet you can't guess what it's based on. Well, you did. It's a tube screamer. It's really nice. It has some really, really great tweaks. I think it has a little more gain to it and the tone control is way more usable. I'm not gonna shoot them out because there's no point here. All of these pedals have really nice adjustments that make them not a direct clone of anything. So we're not gonna waste our time there. Just listen to it as it is. Really great drive pedal. pedal version of their famous rack mount unit. What it does is a bit mysterious, but they say that it adds clarity, some depth, and it fixes phase issues in your signal path. I'm not really sure exactly what all it does. I've never studied the circuit, but I do know that I really like it. I used to run it at the end of my pedal board as an always on more better device, but I've seen a lot of people put it after high gain drive pedal specifically to clarify those and just make them sound really good no matter where the settings are. With that said, I'm gonna quit talking and just play the pedal because that's what you really want. Next up is the Frequency Boost One Knob Boost Pedal. 
This isn't your normal, typical clean boost pedal. It is based around the 1966 Dallas Rangemaster, which many of you know I am a huge fan of. The biggest difference in these is that this is $4,000 and this is like $29 on reverb. Now, another big difference that's really impressive to me is that while the old Rangemaster and other variants of this pedal use a transistor and sometimes a very hard to find germanium version of the transistor, which is very finicky, they said no to all of that and they use an op amp, which is really consistent and all of these sound identical. To my knowledge, this may be the only treble boost variant type pedal that just uses an op amp and that is really cool because it sounds fantastic. A little bit mind blowing to me because I like it so much. I'm gonna take this and kinda put it together with their Screamer variant that you saw and show you how I would use it. Next up is another boost. It is their full range boost called the Busta Grande. Now this is a single op amp non-inverting circuit, much like the micro amp, but you know, it's not like they cloned a micro amp because there's only so much you can do with a single op amp and they do it really well with this. So it's really powerful. It keeps all your low end intact, all your high end and mega, mega loud if you start turning it up. And that does cool things to drive pedals after it, or in this case, just my very clean Fender style amp. I'm gonna break it up with just this pedal. I like it a lot, and I like this blue color. It's really amazing how many blues there are, and this one, this one's good, really good. They have two boost and two compressors, and that's impressive to me. This is very, very different from the orange squeezer based one. It's called the Opto Stomp, and it is an optical compressor. That other one that I showed you is a FET based compressor. This actually uses a Vactrol and light detection to turn the compression element on and off. It has a pad for negative 15 to zero, and I would say that this is very, very, very kind of a pro audio studio type circuit. It doesn't feel like anything I've ever seen in the guitar pedal market and it's really, really unique. I like it for a lot of reasons, but I won't go into those. I'm just gonna play it. The Crusher by BBE, because this is a BBE episode. But moving past that, it's very important that you know how good this is. It simulates a high gain Marshall stack sound and it does it really, really well. So well that it kind of blows my mind when you stack it up against pedals that cost four or five times what this is found for used on reverb. Now it comes with its own conspiracy. And if you've been watching this, which you have because you're at this point in the video, you know that we already had one conspiracy with the orange compressor. That makes this the second conspiracy on today's show. And I want you to know that this is a big deal for pedals. It's a big deal for our nation. It's a big deal for our planet Earth. Two conspiracies in the same year by the same company on this channel. We are the breaking news authority for pedals from 2006. You heard it first here. Let me tell you the story. Paul Gagan is the designer of this circuit. Now he designed stuff for Fender, uh, Charvel Jackson, and when working at Jackson in the mid 80s, he was messing around building pedal circuits. He would put them in little blank enclosures and hand them out to famous bands as they came through the Jackson factory. Now this circuit, he says he designed in 84, 85 and was handing it out at that time. 
And then they release it at BBE in 2006. But keep 85 in your mind because that's important. We have this pedal coming in 88. These are identical. The circuit's the same, the sound's the same, and it's kind of creepy. It's kind of X-Files. It's kind of like, what's going on here? He says he designed it in 85, was giving them away, and then Marshall releases the same exact circuit under the governor, which is the sound of a stacked high gain Marshall in 88. You know, I don't know who came first, and honestly, I don't care. I just love pedals, and I want you to love pedals. Particularly, I'm gonna play this pedal because I love it. If it has a history attached to it, that's its own business. It's a good pedal. Last but definitely not least is my favorite BBE pedal. I know I said it about the first pedal and I have a lot of emotions about all these in between because they're also my favorite. But this one's a lot of my favorite and I'm coining that phrase. Oh look, it's in the box. Um, because I have a ton of these original boxes and manuals and stickers and stuff from 2006. So weird that I'm showing you. It's not like I'm bragging or anything. Anyway, it's the Free Fuzz. It is a 70s inspired silicon fuzz with a little clever biasing trick. Now, the 70s fuzzes are really expensive like this one. And we see people like Mike Fuller of Full Tone release pedals around this as well. But this guy kind of does away with the typical fuzz control that you'd see on a fuzz pedal. And they use the fuzz knob as a bias technique that's really, really unique to this. What's crazy about it is how it holds its own as a distortion pedal. It does the nice fuzz textures, it loves the neck pickup, and it cleans up really well with the volume control. And it's astronomically, unbelievably affordable, at least before I shot this video. Today's record time is brought to you by the 2005 Spoon release called Give Me Fiction. This was the second Spoon album I ever heard. I wasn't totally into the first one, but when I heard this, I loved everything. I hunted it all down, I listened to demos, b-sides, everything I could find because this album is amazing and I think it's in my top 25 albums ever. It changes from time to time, but I'm pretty confident. And you need to listen to tracks like Beast and Dragon Adored, I Turn My Camera On, and My Mathematical Mind. Those are my favorites. When you're listening to Beast and Dragon Adored, notice the guitar parts that are distorted and played really crazy, like kind of an unmelodic, chaotic guitar part. That's where they plug directly into a Neve desk and created this fuzz distortion for Brit. That sound itself, along with some Wilco stuff and the Beatles White Album, is why we designed the color box and the crayon. So if you've ever liked those pedals, this is a part of that pedal's history. So check it out and let me know what you think. This album's from 2005, like I said. These BBE pedals are from 06. So let's talk in the comments about mid-2000s albums that you really, really like. Drop them in there, maybe I haven't heard of them, and tell me why you like them. And maybe I'll like them as well. Go listen to this. Thanks so much for watching this episode. I hope you enjoyed it. I wanna give a few other points here about this 2006 line. Now they're in all metal enclosures, true bypass switching, and the circuitry inside is mainly all through hole parts and really high end stuff. So these are on par with anything from the 2000s that was kind of coined boutique. So I just can't say enough about going and trying these out. A lot of these that you saw today have new branding or maybe they're in a smaller enclosure, but they're 
all exceptional and they have the same build quality. They're also known for this wah, which came out later. It's based around the Italian Vox wah and it is magnificent. When it comes to wah pedals, it's crazy how well this is made for the price. I use this for years and years. They have some new pedals and new designs that obviously aren't from or have anything to do with the 2006 series you saw today. And one of them is this 427 Distortion. Out of all the BBE pedals, this is for real, my absolute favorite distortion pedal they have. It's based around kind of the rat topology and it's great, thick fuzz, cutting distortion, and it even does some nicer clean tones. So with that said, go check out all these BBE pedals. I really love the two-timer delay and the Mindbender Chorus Vibrato. I think it's a really clever take on the Boss CE2 analog thing. So with that said, hit like if you like this episode, subscribe to the channel, and hit the bell icon for future episode notifications. The only problem is there won't be any future episodes because this is our last uh, episode we're ever airing, and uh, I just want to thank you guys for hanging in with us. I'm totally joking. I've been on vacation. I'm just really hyper, so I'll see you next week.